Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, 3. God wants us to know things that we don't know about. And uh, my name is Reverend Bob Butler. Actually, my name's Bob Butler, but I'm Reverend Bob Butler from Agape and Praise <laughs> Fellowship. And with me is Reverend Kendall. J Kendall. Reverend Jerry Kamak. I don't have a beard. Kendall's uh, He's probably starting one by now, too. <laughs> he usually has one by Thanksgiving time. Uh, from Gerald Kanak Ministries and Tiffin. And uh, we're here to share from the book that we're publishing, which we'll have it published hopefully by the end, before the end of this year. And we're using that as kind of a guide and then we're making commentary on the commentaries. The book is mostly scripture, has to deal with our words, what we're talking about. Jesus says our words are like seeds and we plant them and what every person sows, the person's gonna reap. And so we've been talking about that very thing, going through the first chapter. Uh, there are five chapters in the book, so we might be at this for a day or two. Uh, but we want you to copy it and then go back and glean it uh, from it, whatever you can to help you. Because we know there's principles here that, that's talked about that will help you live a victorious life. Um, it's not too late <laughs> to plant some good seeds in your yeah. life. Uh, you may be reaping some bad seeds uh, harvest now that uh, you need to change so uh, we'll pick up there uh, we've been talking about uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues we went through that in the last program uh, not a hundred percent fulfilled but we did it I think to the point where you can understand uh, how tongues plays into this uh, and we know that there are theologians that that uh, don't go along with that that they say well it passed away or it's of the devil or some excuse of why they don't have tongues uh, a lot of the people Christians that don't pray in tongues it's because they don't know they've never been taught they've never had the experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and so consequently they live their Christian life to the best of their ability and thank God for that mm -hmm. uh, but there's just more to it than that they're like the uh, believers in Ephesus that Paul yeah. ran into. <laughs> They'd not so much heard as there was a Holy Spirit. Or Holy you, mean, you mean there's more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he uh, expounded on that a little bit more and then laid hands on them. They all spoke with other tongues. And we had to go us. through that same experience. Yes, amen. Thank God for that. Now, that's a drastic change. <laughs> you can say that I, I spent seven years as a Christian uh, and never heard about that. But when I heard about it, I had to find out more about it. Yeah. And when I found out more about it, I found out from the Bible that it was real. It was true. And I wanted it. And I got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's like the gifts of God. <clears throat> yep. They're all gifts, and they can't be received until you know what the gift is and accept it. That's right. And uh, Amen. we could spend, we have spent time teaching on that in times in the past. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. We need to pick up with where we left off here in the book. Right. Uh, we were talking about the three kinds of prayer, uh, right. praying silently, uh, praying in our known language, and then praying in the Holy Spirit, yes. our heavenly language, yes. praying in other tongues. And then we go on, you go on to say, if you pray silently without speaking forth, that's good, and it will edify you. God will hear you and move on that. But the saying of the words is really the best way to do it. When you pray silently, you are not planting any seeds. When you say the words audibly, seeds are planted and they have to grow. You plant the seed, God grows it up, and someone else comes along and harvests it. Or you could be the one who harvests it. That's a, that's a good, uh, good uh, illustration here. Uh, a person who is mute mm -hmm. cannot and sow the seeds right. unless they use sign language. That's the only way they can sow their seeds. Mm -hmm. um, so the words that we speak, um, just like Jesus said, the words that he speaks, they are life, and they are spirit, and they are life. It's the same thing for us. The words we speak, they are spirit, and they are life, or their death. Life or death is in the power of the tongue. Yes, that's what the Bible teaches. So you, you just triggered a thought when you said that, and and I had the thought in the last program, and it wasn't time to say it. You mentioned the mute. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> he doesn't have the ability to say the word, but he can communicate by sign language. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where uh, intercession can come in play for that person. <coughs> it's, I'll give this example. It's like a farmer who has had a problem and he can't get out and plant his field. Mm -hmm. But he can call up his neighbor and say, hey, can you get some of the neighbors right. together and come and plant my fields for me because I'm just not able to do it. Mm -hmm. And they can come and plant seeds for him in his fields. Yep. And who gets the harvest? He does. We can do the same thing for the mute. In fact, we can go to the point where even maybe God, uh, in his timing and everything, will restore the vocal Mm -hmm. aspects of that mute so that he can in the future yeah. speak forth himself mm -hmm. that's not above God correcting uh, it's like blindness uh, mm -hmm. we know that God has repaired blindness in people all over the world many different times so mm -hmm. speaking the word is is the same but in the meantime he could have somebody plant the seeds for him in agreement with him mm -hmm. and actually say the words okay. and there again tongues can be involved mm -hmm. that's true amen so we continue on? Go ahead. <clears throat> so now faith has been injected into our seed planting by us speaking yes. <clears throat> things. Uh, when you mentally pray silently, that, that's a mental prayer. Yes. Uh, you're not releasing faith in the, in, really. the, in the result spoken. That's when you release your faith. Well, meditating on the word is good for you. <clears throat> and that's really the only yeah. benefit. Yeah. Other people won't benefit from any of those things because they're not audible. Yeah. So now faith has been injected into our seed planting. When, when I think of faith, I, I think of water planting a seed. Mm -hmm. We we apply that faith to the seeds or the words that we speak, mm -hmm. and it waters it and causes it to grow. Someone may come along and say something negative about faith people. Without faith, it is not possible to please God. So you had better be a faith person. Don't go around knocking faith people. Without faith, you cannot get saved. Uh, I mean, those are those are all valid statements because they're <laughs> all true. Um, we, there's a lot of uh, people in the past. I don't think it's so much anymore, but uh, I can remember 15, 20 years ago, the faith movement, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the word movement, was, was just getting bombarded Hammered by daily. fellow Christians yeah. uh, who didn't understand uh, where they were coming from right and uh, I think over the the decades in that regard the teaching of the word uh, <clears throat> has brought those people to a better understanding of that I think it boiled down to the fact that they were ignorant and didn't understand it and weren't curious enough to find out the mm -hmm. truth yeah uh, un but fortunately that has changed I think you, you, you <clears throat> said it right yeah. you, you don't hear near as much contrary to it uh, because without faith you can't get saved mm -hmm. and that's right the bible says that god has given every man the major that's faith right and and so you there is capability for everyone mm -hmm. to get saved even you people out there that are just flip by and pick this channel or pick that program up if you're not saved you can get saved god gave you the faith to get saved amen because uh it takes faith to believe that jesus is exactly who he said he was and is right. yes amen so faith is the ingredient, the life, in our words that makes them come to pass. You can say, well, if that's the case, then I speak God's word and have faith in that, it will come to pass. I'll have a good report and I'll have a good crop. That is absolutely true. But you could say, if I speak weed seeds, we are, you are going to have faith in what you say or you wouldn't be saying it. Faith in Satan's words will do the same thing because the same principle applies. And that's what I, I think a lot of people misunderstand. Yes. When, when you speak negative words, uh, words of uh, uh, retaliation, words of uh, uh, hurtful words, the devil does everything he can to bring those things to pass mm -hmm. to the people that you're speaking them to. And you. And you. And uh, on the other hand, if you're speaking words of faith and words that are in the Bible, uh, then God is bringing that to pass. He will confirm the word with signs following. Blessing and cursing. Mm -hmm. Back to blessing and cursing yeah. again. 
people, you know, we hear from stories from Africa where the witch doctor put a curse on somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's a certain amount of validity in that. Uh, but if he's trying to curse a Christian, he's really, uh, if that Christian is knowledgeable at all, uh, that witch doctor is not going to have much effect. Mm -hmm. But we know of some cases where he has had some effect in meetings and things with the people that came because they weren't able to yeah. ward off that curse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we've heard stories come back from Africa and, and things like that where uh, both has happened, where the Christian has taken authority over it and, and actually stopped it. Yeah. Uh, in other cases where they didn't know about it and some people were hurt because of it. Mm -hmm. So the principle works, whether you're on the positive side or the negative side. Mm -hmm. So the key is this, when we put forth our faith, let's put it forth with God's word. <laughs> okay, that's, that's pretty... Pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty basic. Let's put forth our faith. Uh, I like the way you phrase that. Let's put it forth with God's words. Uh, it isn't always easy to do. Uh, when someone comes up and, and is ridicule you and <laughs> yes. putting you down and things like that, it's, it's awful tempting just to want to punch them in the nose. But uh, when you just don't react, you respond with the love of God and say, well, you know, if that's your opinion and you're you're entitled to it, but uh, I don't see it that way. See, I had a case where I was at work where the, the production manager used to do that with me. And, uh, and the last day I was there, I got to lead him to the Lord. And he said, you know, I never could understand why you didn't retaliate. Mm -hmm. When I come in here and I intentionally mm -hmm. tried to get you mm -hmm. to, to respond the negative response sure. back to him. And he said, you'd never do it. Mm -hmm. And he says, I never could figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> But that's why. That's why. <laughs> that's probably what brought him to the Lord. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, amen. Uh, see, where did I leave off here? Uh, if it was easy, then no faith would have to be involved, and God reacts only on faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's what Hebrews says. If it was just a matter of receiving without us having to use faith, Jesus could have walked around in the streets after he was resurrected saying, See here. Here are my signs. Look here. I'm resurrected now. I'm not in the grave anymore. The people who saw that would have said, Oh, what a marvelous thing. And there would have been no faith in that. So no one could have gotten saved. That's kind of a neat example. Although there were many who did see him. Well, <clears throat> that did arise from the grave and went into into the city. Matthew chapter. And, and you know, <laughs> showed, showed their relatives that, said, Hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was kind of a th neat thing. That only that always mentioned one place in the Bible, but uh, mm -hmm. we've we've ministered on that before, and uh, the effect that would have on some. But see, the people that knew them were the only ones really that would have much effect there. Mm -hmm, yeah. And say, well, you, you know, you told us that for a long time. Now it's happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is under the old covenant, so there's some things there that could be yeah. said too. Jesus told Thomas, you see it and you believe. But what about the ones who don't see it and mm -hmm. believe? They will be more blessed. That's us. None of us have seen Jesus with the nail holes in his wrists, but spiritually we can see them. That's where our faith comes in. We take our, say we take our saying of words, the planting of seeds, mix our faith with them, and apply them to our financial condition, we plant financial seeds and speak forth on those seeds, blessing them, called, called watering, mm -hmm. and they will bring forth a crop. We can speak forth those same words about healing. By his stripes, I am healed. My back is healed. Hallelujah. We can speak forth all of God's blessings and promises and receive them in the same way. We say, I am redeemed from the curse of the law, as it is written in Galatians 3, 13 and 14. I have all the God's blessings. Both the curses both the curses and God's blessings are found in Deuteronomy chapter 28. We speak forth those words, believing that we receive what we say, and we shall have them. That is faith. Yeah, right back to Mark 11, 22, 23, right 24. Right back to it, yeah. yeah. And also Hebrews where it talks mm -hmm. about faith. Yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Because if it had already been seen, it wouldn't be faith. You'd say, well, there it is. 
So you, there's a time element where patience is involved. Mm -hmm. uh, God said it this way to me. He says, believing is the first step. Knowing is when you can possess it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because knowing is intimacy. Uh, do you want to read the next, go on to the next one? Well, faith is what makes the seeds grow. Yes. It's the life in the seeds we plant. If we speak idle words and we put our faith in those words, we will be held accountable for them. Yes. And we, well, I think we covered that in one of the first programs. Yeah, we did. That uh, we went over that quite a bit. So uh, we can probably just continue going on. When Jesus came back to his disciples after his resurrection, showed them that he was alive, he, then he ascended up to the Father, the angel said, Why do you stand here watching him go? He's coming back here again. Before he left, he told them all that all power had been given and given to him, both in heaven and in earth, and he gave it to them. He has given his name to all of us who believe so that we can go about and be successful in anything we put our words to, or with faith, believing that we receive. Uh, what, <clears throat> there's, there's part of that sentence that I want to bring out because he said he's given us his name to all of us who believes that we can go about doing successful things. And the one right above that, he gave it to them. What did he give to them? He gave them the authority to use his name to overcome this world. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's part of what we were talking about also when we was talking about learning how to command something and learning when to pray about something. A, a lot of people pray and command, they kind of mix them together. And you wonder if they really understand what's happening when they say or do that. Uh, you know, when Jesus spoke and taught, uh, people were amazed because he did not speak as one of the scribes. That's right. He spoke with someone who had authority. Had authority. Because he knew what he was talking about. He knew, he knew who he was and yep. what he had. Amen. And the devil knew it too because remember in the story where he was in the temple and these uh, evil spirits came up and said, you here to to tempt us or mm -hmm. to throw us out early or to cause us problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, they also knew that Jesus uh, had authority over them. And uh, I, I think they also knew the timetable that it wasn't ready for him yet. Uh, because man had to get involved in that. Mm -hmm. And consequently, he did. Okay. In Ephesians, you what? In Ephesians, it says that when we have done all to stand, we are to stand. Speak forth those words and watch those seeds grow. Some seeds grow faster than other seeds. Plant an acorn, a corn kernel, and a radish seed. Which one will grow first? The radish seed will grow first because it reacts the fastest, grows faster, and matures faster than either of the other two seeds. It's the same way with the words that we plant. When we plant those three different kinds of seeds, someone will some will take a while to grow. Some will get a response back very soon, and others will take longer. It might take a year to get that corn harvested. If you want to build a house out of, an, out of that oak tree, you might have to wait a hundred years. <laughs> when you've done all to stand, stand. Don't give up the ship. Don't tear up the roots of the seeds that you've planted. Um, <clears throat> using, using this illustration here, uh, of the different seeds it's the same with our words there are there are words that we speak which take longer to manifest yes and uh, to grow mm -hmm. than uh, than other things uh, spiritual um, wisdom and insight we've already been given so those things can manifest themselves quickly uh, you know when you when you pray that uh, you know, I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, that the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of his calling, mm -hmm. and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of that mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. They're just using the Ephesians mm -hmm. uh, chapter 1 uh, prayer. We, we are praying that, and that we can receive very quickly yes but uh, like financial things there's a process that we plant seeds uh, we give and we plant seeds that way and we speak words over those seeds that we believe for a hundredfold return or a thirtyfold or a sixtyfold wherever you're at but you believe for a hundredfold return 
it takes some time for that to begin to manifest itself back into your life. So there, there's just a, a real difference in, in the seeds we plant. So you have to be aware, and I use a word that's very crucial, have patience. <laughs> Patience is very important in, in all of this. Yes. Uh, and that's where a lot of people fail because they say, well, I've tried that faith thing and it mm -hmm. didn't work. Well, that's the problem. You just tried it. Yeah. You didn't really put it to practice. And, and Copeland, he gets big on that. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, don't try it. Do it. Do it, yeah. Uh, but when you've done all the stand, don't give up the ship. Don't tear up the roots of the seeds that you've planted. So many mm -hmm. times people have planted financial seeds and turned around two months later and said, well, I guess that didn't work. I haven't got anything. They've just destroyed their seeds that they've planted. Mm -hmm. You know, so they need to renew re, uh, those things and, re, and regrow them. So there's a, there's a process there that people have to learn. And Mark chapter 4 that pretty well brings that out. I had about three or four thoughts. <laughs> Which one do you want to run with? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you triggered a lot of thoughts with the things you were saying there regarding the patience. Mm -hmm. uh, patience, let her patience have her perfect work. Yep. Well, the perfect work is letting that seed grow to maturity where you can right. harvest it on time. Mm -hmm. uh, too often, we want to harvest green apples and make. Uh, make apple pie. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes I think those green apples, if you let them stay in there and grow just a little bit more, you get a better pie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> better tasting pie, that's for sure. <laughs> so, so it's the same thing with, with our wanting a crop. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we get a try to get a premature harvest mm -hmm. and we try and help God. Yeah. And, and consequently, we don't get the full harvest that God really intended on something. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of a perfect example right now for that, but but the point is, uh, a farmer don't go out and start harvesting his green corn. That's right. He lets it go the full maturity. And I think that's why Ephesians says, when you've done all the stand, stand, mm -hmm. therefore. Yeah. Uh, don't just stand, but stand, therefore. Stand until the, the thing is complete or where mm -hmm. you can have the full harvest. Then maybe you'll get the hundredfold return instead of 30. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I also think, and I heard this the other day, and it makes a lot of sense. He who wrote, sows sparingly, reaps sparingly. It, it, we right. mentioned it in one yeah. of the other programs, and it goes right into this. Mm -hmm. If you plant an adequate number of seeds in the ground, and this financial is one of them, mm -hmm. uh, if you if you just are, I'm just giving my tithe. Well, yeah. that's God's to start with. I'm just giving my tithe, and and the word tithe only means ten percent. So if you're just giving ten percent uh, of your income to God. This Latour that had the earth moving equipment, he was a Christian. And he said the history of it is as he went through, he started out giving 10%. Mm -hmm. But he said when he died, he was keeping 10%, giving 90%. 90%. Yeah. So he was going all, he went into the offering mm -hmm. mode yeah. uh, past the tithe. Because when mm -hmm. you go past the 10%, now you get into the offering mode. I think that's where you can move from 30 mm -hmm. to 60, 60 to yeah. 100. Yeah. Because yeah. because now you've planted more seeds. Mm -hmm. The the planting of seeds when we do it on a daily basis and we and we do positively or neg negative. Yes. Because we speak words every day. There there's not too many people that get up and don't say a word the whole day. Uh, we we all like to talk. <laughs> in other words, part of the human nature. Yeah, part of the human nature. But when we when we do. We plant seeds, good or bad, every day, every hour, every minute. Uh, so when you're planting the Word of God in our vocabulary and we're speaking and confessing that Word, that's what really you're talking about yes. in that sense. You're confessing what God's Word says, you know, by His stripes I am healed. Right. When there's physical pain in my body, I, I reject that, I rebuke that and command it to leave that's the authority yes but then I am confessing that by his stripes I am healed that's what I believe that's what I speak uh, that's my desire when I pray believe that I receive it and I shall have it all those begin to flow together but when you lose patience 
uh, and say the symptoms uh, in your body, the pain in your body has not subsided in 30 seconds. <laughs> Some people say, well, I guess I didn't get nothing. Yeah, that's... You know, that, that uh, you know, we hear that a lot. Well, I guess I didn't get anything. Uh, and really, they just tore up their seeds. That's the right. seed has been planted for healing, and yet they don't have the patience to wait and stand, therefore, to receive the full manifestation of that healing power. And so it'd be like the farmer going out and planting corn seed and, you know, he gets it all planted and, and harrowed over and everything, all well and good. And two days later, he goes out and digs it all up because he wasn't sure it was growing. <laughs> you know, yeah. no farmer we've, would do that. We've used that as an example. Yeah, no farmer it, would it, do that. It, it, no. Not in his right mind anyway. <laughs> no. But but Christians do it with their words all the time. And don't even think and about it. And don't even think about it yeah. because they don't have the understanding uh, of how much power, how much authority are in the words that we speak. And we've all done it. Uh, all sometimes done it. we've done it and, and we know better. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we've done it because of ignorance. Yeah. Uh, there's all, and sometimes we've done it out of haste or out of uh, moved on by some other influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the principle is still going to work regardless of which way right. you're working it. Uh, it says here we can't always tear up those seeds anyway when we've said it and believe it. They're saying that what's been going around, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Well, God said it, and that's enough whether you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Believing it or believing not believing it isn't going to change what God says. That's right. God has ultimate faith, and when he says something, it happens. That's the way, that's why we're here. That's right. He created the heaven and the earth by his words. He planted those seeds, and what happened? Boom. There's a great explosion. <laughs> it's the, Here's the earth. In Genesis, it says, God said, God said, God said, and all those things which he said came to pass. And he and I heard a minister the other day say, and God said on the seventh day, it's time to rest. <laughs> and he says, you know, I didn't realize that God got so tired saying, God said, God said, God said, <laughs> God said. Uh, he says, but he must have really got wore out saying, God said. So he needed the day to recuperate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, I got that. I got a big charge on that, but I don't think that's a hundred percent right on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. We have authority in the words we speak. God is interested in what we are saying. When we say His words, then we can, then He can come and move in through them. Every one of us has at some time said something and watched God move through our words and accomplish what we've spoken. Everyone has said words, good seeds and weed seeds, and watched them come to fulfillment. You can watch mm -hmm. those seeds. In fact, yeah. it's thrilling when you're really in tune with what we're talking about here, this whole chapter. When you're really in tune with it, and you plant those seeds, and you're patient enough to watch it, you can see them come to mm -hmm. pass. That's right. That is thrilling. Yeah, because yeah. you know that you didn't do it. You only planted the seed. Mm -hmm. God did it. Yeah. He brought it to pass. So the more seeds we plant, the more good seeds we plant, the more good harvest we, we have. have. Plant seeds of good seeds on a daily basis, we will have a continual harvest right. of the word. And, and it's thrilling to see God move with the plant the seeds in regard to other people's lives. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I said that in some, such a way that it may have sounded kind of selfish, you know, well, God's working for us. Yeah, he does. But when we're when we're cognizant of the people, other people and their needs, and we become a part of that, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because God is just as much wanting to bless them as he is the individual, that's the right. one speaking the words. Draw them to us. Praise God. Is there anything else you want to add on this one? We're about out of time. Very close. I mean, this is a good time to close on <laughs> this one. We're at the end of the chapter. We finally got to the end of chapter one. Uh, and there's five chapters in this book. Uh, I hope I hope that you uh, have developed a desire to read and understand more of what is in this book. The next Amen. chapter is what goes in will come out. Amen. Chapter two. 
So when that's coming at it from a different perspective and uh, going to have a big effect on your uh, harvest.